Vice Chair Germain, members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to come here and testify before you today. For those of you who do not know her, I would like to recognize my spouse, Deborah, who's here. Um, Deb is with me today because this debate is not about abstractions. This debate is not about definitions. It's about thousands of families who will be protected by this law. I'm here today to talk about what marriage means to me and what a marriage license does for our families. Marriage is a sacred institution. And I have benefited from two of them, one from my parents and one of my own. Dale and Doris Mazier are as in love today as they were over 40 years ago when they made a promise to forever to each other. The strength of their marriage and that commitment to forever is what gave me the confidence and security to fly, that I could be all I ever wanted to be. I wish for all families a marriage rooted and sustained by that commitment. Thankfully, I found the same for myself. Like my parents, Deborah and I are as in love today as we were when we made a promise of forever a little more than five years ago. Our relationship is built on love, mutual respect, admiration, and fidelity. Marriage is not always easy. Ours has been tested profoundly. But what pulls us through each and every time is the depth of our love and commitment to each other and forever. What pulls us through each time is our commitment and faith in God and our commitment and faith in each other. Our marriage is deeper, more complex, and everlasting today than I ever could have imagined it being. Marriage is a safety zone to live life with a partner in trial and error to try really hard to always do the right thing, but to also be forgiven when we <clears throat> fail. What makes this institution sacred is not about whom pledges to each other. It is about the pledge itself. In many ways, what the opponents of this measure want to prevent us from having is the one thing you can never keep us from doing, and that is making that pledge to each other. We take that pledge. We make an everlasting commitment to each other. We live in love and we live as families. You cannot take that away. We are all of that regardless of whether or not this bill passes. But what we need is the same respect that when we make those commitments, when we say forever, that the state helps to uphold that promise and protect us in the same way that it does for every other couple. Right now, we are legal strangers to each other. But no matter what, our spirits are intertwined. And we need to have the law recognize that. For thousands of years, what has made marriage sacred is the promise of forever. <clears throat> and that promise gets fulfilled in part from the protections granted by the state to help sustain relationships in the good times and in the bad. <clears throat> and while it's love that makes a family, it is marriage that protects it. A state-sanctioned marriage license protects us when one of us is in the hospital, or when we need health insurance, or when we need to visit each other in the nursing home, or make financial <coughs> decisions for each other, or make life and death decisions for each other. Deborah and I have made our pledge and are keeping it. It's time for the state to reconcile its role in protecting this forever commitment. Colleagues, I ask that you give House Bill 175 a favorable report, not just because you want to be on the right side of history, not just because you believe in social justice and equality, not just because you think it's the right thing to do. Support the Civil Marriage Protection Act because you believe in the sacredness of marriage, because you believe in the pledge to forever, and because you believe that the state has a role in protecting these commitments. Thank you very much, Mr. 